So, I've just done three days of filming for a new Bollywood movie called Tuesdays and Fridays, and it's been really good fun. Lots of, lots of energy and enthusiasm, lots of fun dancing to watch and sometimes be involved with, but my, uh, my feet are a little bit sore right now because these shoes are are quite new and not quite worn in yet. So standing around and then having to jump about a bit in them has been a little bit painful. In case any of you are wondering, this is what happens just before Badger starts one of his gaming videos. Lots of faffing about and making sure camera angles are correct and making sure there's no sunlight on people's heads. And here is where I used to go to university. Some good memories here, and a lot of really rubbish ones too.
Hello and welcome, Balmy Badger Army. Hey, Badger Army. Welcome once again to the show. Today, we are going to be talking about the Spice Girls reunion. We're going to be talking about Katie Price's haunted mansion and migraine cures. Because I've had a migraine for about two days. All, all potential cures welcome in the comments. Yes, indeed. Please let us know your random witchy remedies. Okay, guys, so let's start off with talking about Spice Girls, Nick. And uh, were you a fan of the Spice Girls back in the day? Sort of. I was more into guitar bands, but I did like, but I, I used to follow the top 40 religiously. Right, and okay. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't mind them so much. Mm. Um, I mean, they were everywhere in like um, late 1996. Oh, God, yes, where, uh, they, yes. You could not move for your stuff about the Spice Girls. In 1997, they had a big, there was a big backlash against them. Really? Think, yeah. Yeah, there was a big media backlash, and I think people, and, you know, people, people were just a bit sick of them, really. You know, they're just kind of like, they, you know, they just weren't to people's tastes. I mean, I actually I felt quite sorry for them. Really? It's time. quite random, yeah. because obviously there was a lot of promotion there was a lot of stuff going on i remember them being the most popular band in fact i'm sure someone labeled them more popular than than the beatles at one point and yeah, obviously I mean, they've had two films countless number ones millions of things sold but uh, i think it's a shame keep going with all these different things that have been happening in the media with them and we'll see what happens i'm hoping that they uh, do well with this reunion, but obviously Posh has decided to say no, hasn't Indeed. she? Indeed. Little, little tidbit for you. Posh wasn't actually featured. She didn't actually sing on Wannabe, their first ever song. Really? That got to number one in all those countries. She didn't actually sing, but did she no. just mime it sort of thing? Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, do you think, she'd... was she more like the eye candy of the group then? Not sure. Well, I think they were all meant to be some kind of eye candy. I mean, one of well, the weird things about them was that they were all they were all very different. I yes. mean, even I mean, um, Posh Spice actually went on record to say that even though they were a manufactured band, that's right. Um, that they, you know, they came up with all their own images. That's you know, true. Okay, their, so they came up with a lot of their own stuff. Their own, okay. You know? And I think you know, and the, the fact they were all so kind of like they, you know, they were all, they all. Look, they all had like diff di a different look and stuff like that. Was I think what a lot of people yeah. found appealing in. I mean, obviously, it was that whole thing of like if you, you know, quote unquote, fancied one of them, then you know it was quite good because each one of them had different images and different people to aspire to. So I think it was more along the lines of like the boys and girls could, some of them could fancy them, and then the girls and other people would aspire to be like them and stuff like that. So it was a really good formula. I just think some of the music was flawed. I think yeah. it was a good idea, uh, but some of the music, I think what happened was, you know, I think some of their actual music got worse as it went along. Yeah, and the trouble was kind of like, all of a sudden every record label tried to get its own Spice Girls. This and is true, there yeah. Were a, I mean, it was a bit like when Take That took off and suddenly there every, was loads every of boy record bands. label needed a boy band. That's and it right. just led to a lot of just a lot of really watered down average music in the charts. I know, and it was very I mean, painful, the late wasn't 90s, it? The late 90s was a terrible time for music. Really? Yeah, you yeah. think so? Yeah, there was, you know, there was, it was just all, you know, there was just a lot of, there, there was a lot of kind of like watered down pop music, a lot of watered down dance, yeah. you know, and yeah, it's, it's one of those things that people, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I don't remember that era fondly, and I don't think a lot of other people do Yeah, I mean, well. I do like the indie music from the yeah. 90s. That's probably yeah, the only thing the I really enjoy, it, the indie it, and the rock. It fell in popularity at the, in the late 90s. Mm. Mel C was actually quoted in an interview saying, yeah, we might be partly to blame for that. Oh, really? Yes, because that was when you had all these boy bands and girl groups who were... <laughs> um, Give us some examples. I know there were some pretty bad ones. Oh man, there, there were loads of them. I mean, I mean, uh, so, I mean, in terms of well, in terms of boy bands, I mean, yes. Westlife were just Westlife. Oh dear. And what was the one? Um, the Irish pop girls, Bewitched. Bewitched. They were pretty god awful as well, weren't they? Oh, don't you think? Man. No, I don't. I, I don't remember them. <laughs> Oh yeah, God! It was just another one of those. And what was the really random band like? Take your shoesies off and all that sort of stuff. That was the cheeky girls. The cheeky that girls. That became popular 
through kind of like TV talent shows. They turn up at auditions. Yeah, yeah. They're the kind of thing that no one actually, that would never actually go that far on one of those TV talent Why shows. Why would you want to have that in your thing? I don't understand it. Well, they became, well, it worked for them. They ended up with a couple of funny songs. This is true. Know, novelty, this is true. Novelty value, but not much else. So, so, the, so, with, so with the whole Spice Girls, Spice Girls reunion, I mean, yeah. okay, to be honest with you, I don't blame a lot of acts for going back out on tour and stuff because That's they're, not, true. they're not always going to be able to do it. And, and the Brentwood Festival, you get loads of people indeed. doing that. Indeed, and there's still, you know, and there's still a market for people who want to listen to who want to listen to them. This is you very know, true. Yeah, a lot of people who missed them first time round. You know, I mean, the Spice Girls. Well, the retro or, appeal. The Spice definitely. Girls' main target audience was very young girls. That's right. You yeah, know, many of them, you know, they might not have been old been old enough. Uh, to go That's to true. a Spice Girls concert before. So and now they, they can. This Indeed. is very true, yeah. Indeed. So there's that. So, you know, a new that. generation of fans as well. Yeah. They want that, don't yeah, they? Yeah, but, it's, but at, the same time, at the same time, though, you know, the, the fact that, you know, the fact that there's always been talk of like a bit of falling out, you mm. know, they, you know, it's kind of like with Victoria not joining them. You yeah. know, it's it's that kind that kind of stuff can end up overshadowing the tour quite a lot. That's true. That's you true. Know, and also kind of like how much it changed. I mean, Mel B is said to be about you know over thirty million pounds in debt. Really? Because she uh, she and her husband split up recently, and apparently she spent her entire fortune. Why? That's insane. That is actually insane. I for one am looking forward to it if it pulls off. And uh, it Are you will... going to get tickets? No, I won't be getting tickets. <laughs> I'll be watching on be, TV yeah. or something. Let us know if you're into Spice Girls and be getting tickets in the comments below. Next, we're going to be talking about Katie Price's Haunted Mansion. This was uh, new in the news today. And apparently Katie Price's mansion is now haunted. She's been dabbling with the occult. And now apparently there's been photos on Instagram of ghosts and different things like that. And I, for one, am a bit flummoxed with her because if you've got young children in your house, you wouldn't really do Ouija boards and things like that. It's not something I would do. Your thoughts, Nick? It all ties in nightly with the fact... It all ties in quite neatly with the fact her current squeeze has been a paranormal investigator for over 20 years. Really? Well, you know, maybe he's just found it and obviously there was something going on and maybe she's got to know him through the problem, Nick. Well, Katie Price, Jordan, as she's, al as she's also known, um, she has a bit of a reputation of being famous for being famous. This and we is haven't true. heard much from her recently. Oh so. dear. Nick, are you going to be the bad cop on this one? I, I don't know, man. It just, it just all seems a little bit too coincidental. Think, and it was Halloween last that's week. That's true, yeah. You so know. do you think it's a bit of a publicity stunt? What do you think? Well, if it is a publicity stunt, then the papers have lapped it up. So, you know, it's yeah. it's not like it's entirely her fault. No, so it sort know, of so worked in her behaviour. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I just, it just, uh, it seems a bit convenient to me. So it seems but a bit convenient to you. I think maybe she got to know him through the uh, aspect of it being haunted and then she's contacted him, you know. I would like to think it's genuine. Maybe. But I would definitely maybe. say that she should not of uh, practice Ouija boards and occult stuff around yeah, young children. That's, that's true. That's that was a bit silly. I, I definitely don't think that was the right thing to do. So, uh, you know, I'm a bit disappointed in her for that aspect, but it is a shame. And hopefully they managed to get rid of the ghosts and things like that. So fingers crossed. And next we're gonna talk about migraine cures, Nick. Yeah, do you know any migraine cures? Because I've had one for about two days solid. Yeah. Have you taken any migra leave? I have. I have. Migraines uh, one are of, a bit more complicated than headaches, one of, though, Yes, so. they are. One of our friends told me to lie flat on a uh, on the bed and make sure the bed's cold. That was something someone told me, and hopefully that would calm it down. Um, and have you tried that? I have, and it did ease up. And I did have um, sort of lots of things like chamomile tea and things like that and herbal teas. And it does seem to have helped a little bit. Try not to have too much medication for it, because obviously, you know, you don't want to go down that route unless you have to. Mm. But uh, yeah, so it seems to be easing up. But let us know some of your cures in the comments below, and hopefully I'll feel better soon, because I tell you, I was streaming last night, um, and I just about survived an hour rod before I had to go, because my head hurt so much. 
Yeah. It's just one of these things. Constant, ex constant exposure to bright flashing screens probably doesn't help that right No, now. it didn't help, but you know, it's just one of these things. But yeah, it was a good session on Friday the 13th, so big shout out to Jim, uh, Retro Gamer, and of course, uh, Deluxe Raptor who joined me last night. But yes, thank you guys for watching, and uh, please let us know your thoughts on Jordan's haunted situation, the Spice Girls reunion, and of course your migraine cures in the comments below. Bye for now, Barmy Badger Army. Ta-ta, Badger Army. See you later on, guys. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you soon. We're in a lift, we're in a lift, we're in a lift. So, the bus driver decided not to stop at my stop, even though I was pushing the bell. But, so, I've just had to do a 15 minute, actually it's more than that, it's about 20 minute walk home. I could have gone off on one of them in there, but I just gave them the evil eye for the entire journey. I think I made my point. Southgate, today's first filming location. Why, thank you. So I've just been to an audition in Old Street and then tried to get a bus back to Liverpool Street Station on the basis that that would be quicker than walking, but it turns out that that bus was on diversion and actually wasn't going anywhere near Liverpool Street. So now I'm having to walk all the way back to the street. I'm currently trying to reassure myself, all of the motorbikes, currently trying to reassure myself that uh, it would be even worse if it was raining.
Hello, Balmy Badger Army. Welcome hey, Badger to the Army. show. Thank you, everyone, for 1,500 subscribers. Big shout out to everyone that joined me for the Overwatch special, and a big shout out to Nick for joining me on these vlogs. Thank you very much, buddy. Oh, you're welcome. Indeed. Today, we are going to be following on from the Jelly Beans video that I did by myself the other day, and we are going to be doing a trick or treat Jelly Beans with Nick. Uh, we're going to be reviewing Kong Sugar Free. And we're also going to be reviewing a top that I picked up yesterday from Asda with the Punisher. So, and we're going to talk about Roman Reigns' sad news about relinquishing the Universal title. Yes, so indeed. In Before we go any further, that's not how you spell Reigns on that list, but never mind. Ah! It's going to okay, drive mad. Can't see it. Indeed. Okay, so let's open up the show with, uh, I think, the Punisher top review. Now... I'm a big fan of comic books in general and, of course, The Punisher. And it's been a long time since I've picked up anything like this. It's been great to actually manage to uh, be able to pick up a bit of comic book merch. It's been a long time. Uh, the last comic books I bought was a long time ago. So this is a nice treat for me, you know. It's really good stuff. And uh, I remember The Punisher mainly from the Amazing Spider-Man cartoon early in the 90s when he fought against... Morbius and Man Spider. I don't know if you remember much about that, Nick. Not much. Mm. Was that the series that Iceman was in as well? Yes, I think he was in yeah. it a little and bit. Was, yeah, and there was a female one as well who I can't remember. I can't for the life of me remember her name. Oh, okay, yeah, he did have a lot of uh, like sort of team ups in that episode. Yeah. And the nineties one, in my opinion, was the my favourite TV show when I was a kid. It was on Live and Kicking and Going yeah, Live and things like that. And uh, yeah, they used to do it in ten minute slots. So you yeah. get 10 minutes of action, and then you'd have to wait another hour or so for the next part. It was really good. But they were devious with that. They made it last. Yeah, they made so, you keep watching. In indeed. Amazing Spider-Man had, of course, the Punisher in it in issue 174. So that was the first one in 1979, I believe. But if I'm wrong, please do quote differently. That Actually... Is that 1974? 1974, yes. This is, uh, this is what happens when you can't read your own handwriting. This is very true. Okay, so this is the Punisher top that we picked up, and I'm really pleased with this. It reminds me of like the Magic the Gathering death symbol as well, so that was pretty cool. It looks really good on the camera. It's got a sort of a... A sort of a deathly aspect to it. It's not the traditional Punisher logo. It's like of these the eyes that stare at you. Indeed, yeah. So it reminds me of like the Netflix one that's been going on, and it's similar to that sort of logo. Uh, whereas the one in the original comic books and in the cartoons I'm used to is much more blockier, refined skull that's on there, which is more of an armor. Whereas this is more like a spray paint. So I'm going to pop it on. And we'll see what it looks like on. I actually did pick quite a generous size because I'm just a small man. So here we go. It's nice and comfortable, actually. Feels really good. Yeah, not too bad. That was weird. But yeah, this is really cool. I like this top. Um, I would definitely say 7 out of 10 for comfortability. And it's going to be nice and warm in these cold times. Yes, now I just look like a stereotypical 90s goth. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I know what's wrong with that. You know, um, a bunch of there's a bunch of kind of like goth bands out there who still do. So this is very true. This is very true. Right now we are going to try awesome Kong Strong. Look at that Kong Strong. You know you can't forget it with a name like that. This is going to be very nice. Yes, it's going to be quite interesting. Now I picked up these for nineteen p. Believe it or not, it's a real steal. For That's me. cheaper than paracetamol. I know it's insane. Yeah, so there was a paracetamol is like the cheapest thing in a supermarket, and I think that's even cheaper than that. Most of paracetamol is about twenty four p. Not a two pence sweet, no. But yeah, <laughs> showing your age there. I know. I don't really do pick a. It's his birthday really. next week. Shh, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> oh. But yes, okay. So yeah, the packaging, Nick. What do you think of the packaging? Uh, that's a di that that monkey does not look happy. He doesn't, does he? Wild power, which is wild like, power, which is really cool. It's power. the sort of thing that would have this ad have this advert of men picking picking up 
hot cars and stuff. Yes, you it know, does remind me of that sort of thing. Like, yes, we can do this. But yeah, it's got like the stereotypical look of a Red Bull esque energy drink, which is pretty cool. Lots of bubbles. Lots of bubbles as well. It's interesting. Chin chin. Indeed. Let's have a little taster. Yeah, so this was 19p from Lidl. So let me know what you think of it, this one. You know, take a generous gulp, it's fine. Let me know what you think. You do get that instant hit, don't you? You know what I mean? It doesn't feel as hard as some of the other ones. No. Because it's got no sugar in it, doesn't it? No, this is true. And a bit of subtext on it. Nick's just been from the gym, so this is actually quite appropriate, really. Help you a little bit. So what do you think? Is it giving you a nice effect? How is it making you feel? I think it's one of those things that releases its energy slowly. So okay. I think what that is often do. But then yeah. that's not a bad thing, you know. Release energy slowly, it'll probably last you longer. This is true. I mean, I like the packaging. What do you think, Nick? It's got Kong Strong in very large letters. Mm. It's got a dis it's got an angry looking gorilla. Yeah, so it's obviously like it's energy and power. It's so that's the messages it's trying powder to convey. Powder blue. I don't know if I'd gone for powder blue. Yeah, powder blue. I mean, the thing is, like, obviously the other one, like the sugar one, is actually bright red. So uh, yeah, obviously so this is a stark contrast with yeah. this one, I think. Which is quite nice. I like it. And I think there's like a building in the background. I don't know if you guys can see it's that on like there. Empire State Building? That yeah, kind of so they're obviously referencing uh, sort of yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Kong films. So, honestly, and next, next guys, we're going to try and do some jelly beans that we did the other day. This was really quite fun. Um, I really enjoyed these, actually. Some of them were really nice and some of them are horrible. I'm just going to go through the flavours again for Nick. Um, you got rotten eggs or cola, ginger or vanilla, blackberry or onion, chilli or cherry, which it wasn't pleasant, pepper or blueberry, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's all she wrote. So there's like mm. five of each one. Right I'm going out. to let Nick have a spittoon because last time I got the chilli one, I had, was nearly ill. So here we go. I'm going to give it a generous shake. Right and we're going to try one each, okay? To be honest with, to be honest, honest, um, the previous ones I've tried of these, you know, there was one that was vomit flavour. Yeah. So I'm glad there's no vomit flavour. And another one was toothpaste. Toothpaste, which isn't too bad. I think, right, so you've got the white one, which is either going to be ginger or vanilla, which is actually right. all right. Yeah. And I've got pepper or blueberry, so we might do another round. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. I got the vanilla one, I think. What did you get? Didn't you have a bl blue one? Oh, yeah, no, I did, didn't I? So I got blueberry then. Yeah, it's nice. Mine was definitely ginger. Yours was ginger, but it was quite palatable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's See, this like is ginger the biscuits. I actually quite like ginger. This is why we're always like, oh no, ginger. You know, that's the alternative flavour. Um, but yeah, the, the onion one's quite gross, I think. Right, let's try yeah, another one. I'm glad you warned me. Okay, now I re now I reckon the the worst one of the bunch is definitely the red one. So we should definitely try two red ones. Okay, that is definitely the worst one. So this is either chili or cherry. There's a big difference in this one. Okay, so three, two, one, go. Hmm, I definitely got cherry that time. As did I. Mm, okay. Right. Was it I think it was another cherry one. Oh, was it another cherry one? Okay. Right, so what? Just in change though, I'm going to try the brown one, which is either going to be rotten eggs or cola. Mmm, cola. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Right. Next, let's have... Can we find a purple one each? Let's see if we can find a purple one each. I'm not sure if there's many of those. That's a white one. That's a brown one. Oh dear. 
Is it that one? Maybe. Yes. Right. Let's go with that one. You'll so, know if you get something bad. Trust me. So what onion or blackberry is that? Onion or blackberry. <laughs> onion. Oh. Onion. Blimey, it's sharp as well. I ate mine. <laughs> Brilliant. Rock hard. Of course you are. So what would you think of these then, Nick? What do you think of these? I'm just grateful so none of them taste a friggin' vomit. Well, At booking.com, finding perfect isn't all that difficult. Beachfront property, no problem. Kitchen, how are you guys? Got it. And EV charging. Find your perfect place to stay. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. There is rotten egg. Rotten, rotten egg. Rotten egg. See, rotten egg, I might deal with that, but vomit, you know. Not so much. Okay, right. well, let's should... move on. Let's try one more and then we'll move on to chatting about right. Roman Reigns. What, what channel, what, uh, what flavour, what colour are we going to go for? This I time? think you should go for. Did you try a blue one? No, I didn't. Try a blue one. Right, so let's, let's have a. Blue one each. And then we'll see how we get on. Okay, so this is going to be pepper or blueberry. Okay. Oh! <laughs> okay, got the pepper. Pepper? Got the pepper one. It's not actually too bad. I think mine was pepper as well. That it's definitely didn't taste like blueberry. Yeah. No, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's not something you would get like instant gaggery mm. freaks with. Yeah. But it isn't that pleasant. Right up. Bring them along um next time. The next week's on the bench as well. Indeed. So would you try these, Nick? Would you buy these from home? Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, just for a bit of fun. Indeed. And next, we are now going to be talking about the wrestling section of the show, which yes. seems to be a bit of a weekly thing at the minute. Yes. And we are going to be talking about Roman Reigns, who this morning had to relinquish the Universal title due to his battle with leukaemia. Yes, very sad. It is very sad. And the thing is, the thing is with Roman Reigns, everyone spent so much time hating on him. I don't mm. know if you know much about that. I, I do remember I do remember vaguely, kinda like he was um yeah the yeah he was he was like all he was like all over the shop. Yeah. A few years back. And he has been very much in the mass media and he's been like toted as the Universal Champion for a long time. He took it from Brock Lesnar. Everyone was pleased about that, but they wanted somebody else to have it. So it's almost now, people are getting what they want, but just in a really yeah, horrible way. Yeah, not the way. way they wanted at all. Not the way they wanted. Everyone was so upset that, obviously, he's shoved, been shoved down their throats. Not my words. People mm. have literally used that word because uh, WWE Creative have been talking about it a lot. They've been building up Roman Reigns to be the a next legend in the company. Yeah. And it seems like everything they've done has been pro-Reigns. Mm. And it's almost like now people will understand why they've done that. Because yeah. he's literally uh, obviously been running short on time and they've really wanted him yeah. to have this big push before he became ill again. And sad that uh, he has, you know. Yeah. A big fan of the show and friend of the show and you know her as well time bunny mm. she's a big fan of roman reigns and i'm sure she's very upset with all this as well yeah. i really hope he makes a speedy recovery he seems to have a really good mindset on it he wants to sort it out and he wants to be able to uh, get um it over you know he really wants to get over it and come back to the show so i hope he can yes i that's really do that. hope he can um I, th I think he got, can do it, and I think he's a big star, and I think when he comes back, uh, I think people will see him in a different light. I really do. I'm really looking forward to him coming back. Is there anything else you want to talk about today, Nick? Uh, what else can we talk about? Um, let's talk about Halloween again, Nick. Let's talk about Halloween again. Indeed, yeah. So I'm off to the uh, museum, local museum, on Thursday. That should be really nice. I'm really looking forward to that. Get some photos and videos. Get some photos and videos if possible, definitely. Uh, there's a special event for Badger Junior and all the other little ones, so that's gonna be really good fun. Uh, really looking forward to seeing how well everyone does with that. And that's gonna be a real hoot. Uh, one thing I will mention, of course, is that 
We've been recently getting this for Badger Jr., which is like a CBBC magazine, and he has done really well with that. It's really helping him. And uh, props to the CBBC team and, and BBC because they've got a really good head for what actually helps children educate on this one. Mm. Like some of it's really good, like, and it's really helpful. There's games and all sorts of different bits and pieces in there. Like there's things about Peter Rabbit. There's all sorts of things like how to do spooky stuff as well. But Make for this time of year, perfect for half term. Exactly. So that's really good. I'm really pleased with how Love that's that. getting on. Yeah, good. Um, but that can link into another thing I want to talk about because this was two ninety nine to three ninety nine. Nick. That's... Now, back when we were children, I think you know how much did we pay for magazines? Like eighty five p. It was something like that, but that's that's current. That's kind of like what was eighty five p back then is a completely different sum of money. This by this now. is true. Yeah. This is true. But there's a lot of uh, magazines that I enjoyed, like obviously Starburst, uh, lots of ones about science fiction, the horror magazines, the wrestling magazines. I remember when they were two three pounds, which I find is quite you know reasonable mm. for a magazine yeah but now they've like five six pounds it was only the other month i went to buy a pack of free magazines thinking oh that's a good a good little pack it's going to be a reasonable price they wanted 20 pounds for free magazines nick exactly what is that all about did, it come, did it come with like lots of free gifts nope just three magazines lame Exactly, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the heck's going on here? Yeah. So it was way too expensive for what it is. And I think that's the problem with the magazines now, is that obviously with all the internet that's booming, surely they need to lower their prices, not hike them up. But I'm not a businessman when it comes to things like that. But I would definitely think that'd be a better way to do it rather than uh, make it higher. What do you think, it's, Nick? It's, it's difficult. I think, I mean, the thing, the thing is, it's like, um, I mean, the reason that we still have magazines is that people like to read them at their leisure, mm. you know, it's, and they can go in, they can, magazines can go in, can have more in-depth stories. This is true. Than a, Just an internet than blurb. an internet page, mm. you know, an internet page full stop wouldn't have, wouldn't have kind of like really long articles because people just wouldn't read them. This so is very true. This is true you know, because the whole internet culture is surf and skip. Yeah. Whereas I think if you sit down with a magazine, you want to be involved and you want to read it. Yeah. And I think you get invested in it similar as books. Yeah. So I think that's 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 what they're going for with with um with those. You know, it's a bit like um it's a bit like with newspapers. You know, mm. you might find that you're that uh, that they can go into more detail. Deliveroo presents Decision Time. With offers on your favourite restaurant, make your choice on the app. Detail, not with the current news stories, That's but right. more with the features that they have in them. Oh, they okay. tend to go into they tend to go into more detail there. That's so very interesting. And obviously, I think mainly one of the reasons why it probably has gone up is that you need editors, you need people to make all the different artwork and things yeah. like that. That's probably a way I would justify it. But yeah. I just think the amount that they're paying out is, in, you know, they expect yeah. you to pay out is insane. It's, but yeah, you know, I mean, you've got to have, every article has to be proofread. Mm. has to be, you've got your editors and sub-editors. That's right, yeah. So, yeah, there's, there, is a, there is a lot to it. You know, I, it's, I it's just, just think they need to find a middle involved. ground. Yeah. You know, I can't see, I can't justify paying like six ninety nine for see, a magazine. This is kind of what I think, because I... Because I think the the thing is, a lot of magazines and a lot of newspapers mm. are too long. Yeah, they have too many pages. Mm. You know, and the thing is, they have to try and fill those pages with true. as much as they can. Yes, you know, and it's almost it's almost too. They've almost got like too many pages to fill. That's right. That's what I like about things like the Metro. It's shorter. It's you know you know it's concise. On fewer pages. It's concise and free. And you can get that, and yeah, I mean, and yeah, you know, I mean, I just when you think about all, I mean, news newspapers, they you know they they print like sensational sensational stories, you know, mm. and exaggerate things, yes, and you know, just in this, just in this, like the Daily to, Star and the Sun, oh, all too right, and, and there's they, a reading age of the age of six, I believe, yeah, and it's and 
yeah, you know, it's almost like they've, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I just think it's too long. I think n what newspapers should ideally do is, I think they need to be, I think they need, they need to try and bring down the number of pages that they have. Right, just okay. try not, just try not, just try not to, you know, rather than having all these pages to fill every single day, right. you know. And, yeah, make and, it easy and concise. Yeah, and, and also, you know, the journos might find that easier as well. Exactly, you know. and you know what I would like? Some good news in them. Mm. And that brings us up to the end of the show, and the good news is, thank you everyone that supported me and Nick on the show. Thank Absolutely. you guys. And a big shout out to everyone that stayed here for 1,500. You guys are awesome. I remember, you know, setting up this channel about five years ago, and wondering what would happen, and there's no way would I ever think that we'd get to 1,500. So yeah. Thank from, you very much. From such humble beginnings, look where we are now. Indeed. So thank so, yeah. you very much, guys. And a big shout out to Nick for joining oh, me on these more than vlogs. Welcome as always. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome, matey. Don't forget that you can catch me every Wednesday on phoenixfm.com at 8 p.m. So um, that's a so yeah we're on uh, tomorrow mm -hmm. tomorrow at 8 p.m. That's and right. there's going to be a special Halloween show Ew. on on the 31st as well. I'm going to be joined by a local singer songwriter called Karai. Mm. Um, I think I've heard of him. Have he's heard he's of him? been on the show a few times. He's doing a countdown at the moment on uh, on his social media pages. Um, counting down to his appearance on the show. So look That's up, awesome. Look up Karai, K-O-R-A-Y. Yeah. Um, I know his Facebook page is Black Arrow 13. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, so look, him, so look him up. So he'll be doing that. And hopefully very, hopefully very soon, possibly on tomorrow night's show, if I can, if I can pin him down long ah! enough, uh, we'll have an interview with his majesty. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Thank you, Nick. And of course, we're going to round this up by letting us know what you thought of Kong Strong. Let me know. Let's do that again because it missed the logo. There we go. Let us know what you think of Kong Strong. Kong Strong. Let us know what you think about the jelly beans. Don't forget to bring them in next week. We'll do more of them next week. Let us know what you think about the Punisher top. Would you buy this top? It was $14.99. And its fabric is very smooth, I have to say. Personally, I think it was a good buy. And let us know what you think about poor Roman Reigns and his battle to come back to good. the company. Good so luck let, to you, Roman. Keep indeed, fighting the good fight. Indeed, good luck to you, Roman. And let us know what your favorite comic book hero was back when you were a kid too. And did you used to watch Live and Kicking? And once again, thank you for 1,500, and we'll see you next time. We're going to have to go and be sucked into this abyss. The abyss. Us. Guys, oxen free tonight about half past six. See you there. Bye. The future of work is here. WeWork gives you the flexibility your team and business need most so teams can collaborate and be productive in a way that works for them and your bottom line. Hello, Barmy Badger Army. Hey, Badger Army. Welcome to the show. Today, we're going to have a bit of a special episode and we're going to talk about some follow-up topics that we've done before. We are. And we're also going to talk about some other bits and pieces such as Batista and Rey Mysterio's return to WWE. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about uh, the Banksy shredding incident that we talked about the other week. Yes, we of course mentioned that last week. Yes. Uh, where it got, where the minute, second it got auctioned for a ridiculous six figure sum, a button somewhere got activated and it shredded. Indeed, but apparently half of it shredded. Half of it shredded. This is true. Only leaving the signature red balloon on the canvas. And uh, Banksy has now gone on record on a website called The Lad Bible, and I believe that's from somewhere else, they picked up the interview, yeah. where it actually went wrong. And in previous times, the actual shredding was meant to be completed, and it was meant to be in pieces on the floor. For some reason, it didn't work, and only half of the painting got shredded. So, you know, he's actually sort of done himself a cropper there because it's now worth a load more money as it's now a piece of art history whereas before he wanted it to be in literal pieces. Your thoughts Nick? Well considering how intricate that plan was. I know and apparently he practiced it, was, it loads as well. Yeah I think to be honest with you it's probably a bit hopeful for something like that something of that scale. Yeah. You know when you consider what went into that 
when you consider the, when you consider everything that went in, went into that, you know, for it to you know for it to have all completely perfectly worked out may well have been Man. a miracle. I know, but, yeah. You know, it's you know they could say there's some symbolism in the fact that only the balloon remains. This is true. You know? So and I mean that adds to I think it, doesn't it? Yeah, it still kind of made. It still kind of it did still make, you know, a statement. I this think. is true. A very big statement. I think it was you know, almost I like. I'm shredding this. You're about to sell it, so I'm going to get rid of it. I bet you that was Banksy's thought. He was literally yeah. like, I know this is worth loads of money now. I know this is going to be worth loads of money, so now I am literally going to get rid of it, so now it no longer exists. There's something to be said about the fact that it that it worked at all. Indeed, you yeah, know, to some, be honest, you know, yeah. Something that intricate, as I was saying. You know, there's the fact that there was some... The fact that... He organised a mechanism. What would that have been? Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? How would he have done that? I'm not that? even sure. There's, you know, it's, uh, it's. You can imagine it being something that. Comment below if you've got any ideas. You, you can imagine it being something that they use in certain industries where they've got to like activate a shredder of some sort That's from a distance. Right. That's right. Yeah, they must.